Hey, I'm Don Byron, and I've been asked to talk about the uh, suite number four. Um, my relationship to Bach as a clarinet player is, you know, it doesn't go way back, because there's really no Bach for the clarinet or the saxophone, forget about it. But I had an ex who was an amateur violin player, and I got to know Bach's violin sonatas and partitas through her. And uh, a lot of the stuff that's in those is in these. Um, Bach will take a long stretch of intervals, a whole measure worth of shapes, and just take that shape and just keep developing with it, moving it the same shape through different chord changes, which make for different accidentals. And in the hearing of the accidentals changing, the ear understands where the chords are going. Um, a lot of those movements, like the alaman and the bore, they have like a kind of a dance quality. Like if, if you knew how to do that dance and the bore came on, you grab a chicken, you do the bore with her. You know, no big thing. But then the prelude, I think, is a tremendous piece of music, which just seems to have a lot of the arpeggiations that you'd want someone who played bass in the era of Bach, a bass instrument to be familiar with doing. But then taking those shapes of the arpeggiations, just moving them through a lot of chord changes, complicated chord changes, a lot of seventh chords, minor seven, major seven chords with the seventh in the bass and third inversion, using those to move through kind of violent, distant chords, culminating in the F flat major, 
that brings you back to E flat, just towards the end of the piece. F flat major and maybe F flat Lydian major, depending on the accidentals that you, you choose to believe. Just very fluid, thoughtful, hard to play, I'm sure. And then the flurries of 16th notes that just the modality is just crazily changing. Beautiful piece. I'm probably going to start playing that one myself. And then the Saraband, which is not only beautiful, but it just has all of the elements of an orchestral accompaniment that you might write for the melody. You can hear those in the double stops. Sometimes double stops are just like a stunt. Like I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this player do that. But the double stops here are really an accompaniment that really suggests a whole thing. It wouldn't be very difficult for me to write something orchestral around that line. But the way that he does it. He doesn't have to have everything in it, but it's suggested. It's got a little Miles Davis on it. It's like very minimal, but it's always in the right spot. So um, I really love these pieces. Come, come to love them, and I hope you enjoy them.